The Games of the 32nd Olympiad in 2020 are awarded to the city of Tokyo. Yeah! Coronavirus. 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 Corona. COVID-19. Uh, we agreed uh, to postpone uh, the uh, Olympic Games uh, Tokyo 2020 to uh, 21. It began to feel real when we wanted to come back from the training camp in Turkey. We were among the last to leave the country. The airline sent us a message at night telling us there would be no more flights departing from Turkey as of 8 a.m. the next day. That's when it hit us. My training colleague sent a message to our WhatsApp group. It hit me hard. That's a really hard pill to swallow. All you really do is train for four years. It's the highest goal an athlete can reach. Whether it was good or bad for me personally won't become clear until the qualifications next spring. One thing won't change. Whether it's this year or next, the Olympic Games are my highest goal, especially the upcoming Tokyo Games. I didn't think athletes' nominations would be nullified. I was surprised, but also happy because it gives me another shot at proving myself and living my dream. When you become an Olympic champion, it takes a while to realize and understand what's happened. A lot of that takes place at home and not on site. It really is the main stage for sports. So this year's decision was pretty huge and carries a lot of consequences, which is another reason why it's so important that they were postponed and not canceled. Thomas Röhler didn't choose this downtime in his garden. He had been training for the Olympic Games for several years when the coronavirus pandemic hit. The Games have been postponed for a full year. In spring 2020, the top-level sports world went into lockdown. For around a week after, we were in a sort of in-between zone. It was still okay to be on training grounds, but let's say it wasn't welcomed. Gradually, the sport retreated, there were social distancing rules, and we moved the training equipment from the halls to our homes so that we could stay fit. None of us knew how long this would last. Everyone has had to begin training alone, and competitions have been canceled. Discussions about whether or not the Olympic Games could take place began in March of 2020. We as a society don't know what's coming our way. We don't know whether the Games will take place as a big event or if it'd be a dangerous event infection-wise. Going for walks has become a nationwide hobby. People are going outside, and of course I am too. If you can't travel anywhere, you explore what's outside your door. We trained quite a lot, and then to find out the games weren't taking place, it was as if you'd trained for nothing, because that was your main goal. It was really sad. marie Laurence Jungfleisch is one of Germany's top high jumpers. But she still wasn't allowed into the training facilities. She started training in the forest because there were problems with the hall. I went with her several times. It was outside, which was still allowed. 
Naja, am Anfang, ich glaube, das ging uns ja allen irgendwie so, dass wir gedacht haben, In the haben, beginning, we all thought, okay, it'll be two crappy weeks of pandemic, but then it will get better. Obviously, that's not what happened. It became clear that the coronavirus wasn't just passing through. At this point, no one knows how long the pandemic will last. So athletes have been finding ways to train at home. Arms to the side, palms facing up, right leg to the right. A few weeks later, Jungfleisch and her coach were allowed back onto the track. Jungfleisch competed in the 2016 Olympics. She came in seventh. Many would be proud of that result, but not Jungfleisch. We were both a little disappointed because two weeks earlier she jumped two meters. With two meters she could have won in Rio. After I came in seventh, I just wanted to be alone. I was so disappointed. I didn't want to see Tomas or anyone really. The Tokyo Games are Jungfleisch's last chance. She's in her early 30s. But can the Games or any competition before Tokyo take place? The uncertainty is really hard to bear at times. I'm training for competitions which may or may not take place. I just don't know, which is pretty upsetting. On this day, I believe we can say that the first phase of the pandemic is behind us. For weeks, stores, restaurants and playgrounds have remained closed. Now the capital is slowly returning to normal, to the great relief of most. The first phase of the COVID pandemic is slowly coming to an end and the likelihood of the Olympic Games taking place is gradually increasing. There's no bigger dream for me. I absolutely want to take part and hope I make it someday. I structure my whole life accordingly. My professional career comes second to my athletic career, and I combine competitive sports with my studies. Madalina Feuchtmann has had to stay at her desk much more often than she would like during the corona pandemic. Her passion is the Korean martial art, Taekwondo. I was very nervous. I can remember how one of my teammates told me to do a loud battle cry to intimidate my opponent, which I did. And I can't remember how it all went, but I know I kicked my opponent in the head and she got a nosebleed. I looked at my mom and asked her what to do. She said, good. And then I won. It was a nice way to finish my first tournament. The postponement of the games has also had a positive side for Feuchtmann. She didn't make it past the qualification tournaments. When the games were postponed, those results were nullified. And now Feuchtmann is getting a second chance. I'm very disciplined. I make sure I have a good daily routine, that my social life isn't too active or too late, and that I take time to recover and rest. Basically, that my life has structure. I need that. She may be the underdog at the next qualification tournament, but this doesn't worry her. I've always had to fight my way through. I've always had many competitors, and I just fought my way through. Once I'm there, I'm going to do what I've always done and fight. Just fight. The number of athletes who make it there is so small compared to how many compete in the sport, but I want to be one of the ones who do. Alexandra Ndolo is a German Epe fencer. For her too, there have been some positive sides to Corona. 
Ndolo used to be a pentathlete. She only started fencing at age 21, and since then, the sport has become an integral part of her life. On some days, it's from when I wake up to when I go to bed. I'm always thinking about fencing, because you can't take anything for granted and must keep developing. You can't rest on your past victories. Ndolo won bronze at the European Championships, but she wants more. Going to Tokyo to take part in the Olympic Games would be a dream come true. I was 10 years old when I first saw the Games on TV. They just hooked me. And that fascination has never left me since. It's a huge sporting event with so many disciplines in one place and top performances. It's the biggest event there is for most disciplines. And I want to be part of it. In addition to her Olympic dream, Ndolo is focusing on one other project close to her heart. She co-founded the Kenya Fencing Federation in her father's homeland. When I was in Kenya with my family or met friends there, I'd often get asked, oh, you do fencing, what exactly is that? With that white outfit? Fencing wasn't very common and many people didn't even know what it is. So I thought it would be a good place to build something, get involved and help out. Her efforts to bring fencing to life in Kenya are starting to bear fruit. The capital now has a successful fencing school. She really tries everything. Whenever she's able to, she sends money to her team in Kenya. She's also sent us gear. We keep it back there. We are very grateful to her for everything. Fencing time. Fencing time. Fencing time. Way back, I was this kind of person who used to go to town, do some evil things to some people. And uh, when I realized or when I heard about fencing, it somehow changed my life. It's exactly what I was hoping for, to provide kids and teens access to fencing. It doesn't have to be super professional. Building the structure is already great. And as of last year, we're part of the International Fencing Federation. That was a big step, and I couldn't be happier. Never before have so many new coronavirus infections been reported to the World Health Organization within 24 hours. Numbers are also rising quickly in Europe, just before summer vacations, and travel abroad. Thousands of scientists are now working on more than 150 vaccines, but none is approved for use. So just how close are we to getting an effective coronavirus vaccine? Thomas Röhler is starting to feel the effects of his pared-down training regimen and the lack of competitions. Yesterday, when I got up, I was really sore, which normally wouldn't be great for competitions in summer. But right now, it's happening quite often and feels like the beginning of my training in the winter. It's just taking a bit longer than normal. Despite the restrictions, he's trying to make the most of the 2020 summer. 
even though at this point, he doesn't know when he'll be able to put all of his training to use. As an athlete, you want to plan ahead. My trainer would also like to know whether the games are taking place. His workout is now also a test of patience. In the summer of 2020, the infection numbers did go down. But in 2021, epidemiologists are still issuing warnings. Will there be a second wave in Europe? We don't know. Honestly, I think it all depends on vaccines. However, then, nobody knew how far away an effective vaccine would be. There was one bright spot for Thomas Röhler, though. He and his partner had just had their first child. For me personally, it's a stroke of fate that this happened now. As an athlete, you're rarely home for longer than three weeks at a time. So it was really nice to be home longer now as a new dad. It also helped me get through all the vague planning, cancellations and restrictions. If she's going to take advantage of her second opportunity to qualify, Madalina Feuchtmann also has to stay in good form. The German coach will decide whom she takes, but it's up to me to grow as an athlete, get better, and work on details that could end up being deciding factors. In other words, anything is possible. You never know what's going to happen, just like in this current situation. There's always stuff you didn't expect, but you have to keep hoping. Taekwondo fighter has wanted to show her skills to the national coach. But this hasn't been possible because of Corona. The constant uncertainty of not knowing is proving to be difficult. Her family, especially her mother, helps her cope and gives her the support she needs. That's enough, Moki, no? Looks good, right? Dadurch, dass ich noch zu Hause wohne, bekommt sie alles hautnah mit und weiß auch, was was in mir vorgeht. Because I still live at home, she's there for everything and can tell what's going on deep down. She always finds the right way to get through to me, to help and support me. My family is super important to me. They give me a lot of support. I don't see them that often, so when I'm home, we try to use the time, even if that just means having dinner together and enjoying some family time. At long last, the Taekwondo national team is meeting for the first time in months. But instead of the all-important fight training, only individual training sessions are allowed this morning. And then the worst case scenario. One of Feuchtmann's teammates had tested positive for COVID-19. Everything had to be stopped. It wasn't a surprise that the course was cancelled. It's a shame because we had a lot of good training partners here. And team training is different to always training at home, because here we can compete with the best in Germany. So it's a shame. But we have to accept it now. Once again, Feuchtmann isn't able to compete. It's another setback in her fight for an Olympic spot. But what about her health? Has Feuchtmann also been infected with the virus? 
Unfortunately, I didn't get to show them everything in these three days, so now I don't know. I'll go home and see how the corona test turns out, and if everything is good, then I'll continue training as normal. Germany has posted a massive spike in COVID-19 cases with more than 6,500 new infections in a 24-hour period. The second wave is crashing over Europe and intensive care capacity is close to breaking point. In Germany, and rapidly rising coronavirus infections have prompted action from the authorities. Okay, and now quietly upstairs, you know what to do. Marie Laurence Jungfleisch is studying to become a teacher. She's doing her internship at a primary school in Stuttgart. Normally, it would last for six months, but due to corona, her fall internship will only be six weeks long. I like working with children, and I see how quickly they develop, learn new things, and apply them. Helping children find firm footing to go on their way, I think that's the best thing one can do. Marie Laurence had a difficult time herself when she was in school. I used to be bullied because of my skin color and had to change schools. That's not easy for a small child or for adults. This doesn't just apply to kids, but in general. It's not nice for anyone. Her parents live two hours south of Stuttgart. Her father is from the Caribbean island, Martinique. I didn't know what was happening to my daughter back then. She didn't tell me. I don't know why. Her grades started dropping, and that's when she said she would like to switch schools, rather than repeat the year. I didn't talk about being bullied. It wasn't because I was ashamed. It was just an uncomfortable topic for me, and I didn't want to bother my mother with it. Mm, I think so too. I was 10 or 11. It wasn't that I didn't trust her but just that I wanted to work and figure it out for myself, which is difficult at 10 or 11. Back in Stuttgart, with corona numbers on the rise again, another lockdown is looming. We have a plan A, B, C, and sometimes even D in case things change. The competitions are planned, but it's still unclear, especially in the hall where people can't socially distance and there are many athletes. The athletes are working on jumping power and technique. The empty stadium they're training in reflects the wider situation which at this point has already been going on for far too long. Unfortunately, this year's a bit uncertain. A lot of people are preparing for competitions that will get canceled at the last minute. You are also working towards being fit enough for the competition by training properly. So when all of that winds up not happening, it's pretty tough to deal with. Germany is bracing for a much tougher pandemic lockdown set to begin in the coming days. There will be a lockdown from the 16th of December. What will happen to planned international sporting events? Will they now be cancelled?
Despite the latest lockdown, Alexandra Ndolo is on her way to her first competition in nine months. It was an incredible feeling, but somehow also nerve-wracking. I had to go through whether I had packed everything several times. I normally do that on autopilot. March was indeed a long time ago. Normally at these tournaments there are around 100 competitors, or a bit more. Today we're just 10. That's obviously not a lot, but we get to compete and there's a judge. So it's a step in the right direction. Dolo is among the favorites in Leipzig. But right now, finishing in first place isn't her priority. I just want to get back into my competition routine, get all my rituals back in, focus on myself and the match. interruption is showing its effects. Ndolo is struggling to find her rhythm. Qualifying for the Olympics was already a huge challenge for athletes, and it's becoming even bigger under pandemic conditions. Still, after the many months of uncertainty, Days like this are a good way to feel a sense of progress towards something closer to normal. We need events like these to get feedback on the training we've done, to prepare for what lies ahead. Every event like this is part of the preparation, which will continue until April. So we still have a lot of time, and we're using it to prepare. Yeah, genau. As Vorbereitung event, gucken wir das. The Epe fencer is still far from being in her best form. It's a tough blow, especially with the upcoming all-important qualifying tournament for the Olympics. So things aren't going as she'd hoped. I am pretty upset right now. I expect a lot from myself. Right now, I'm hoping to win all national tournaments. And in general, when I'm heading to a tournament, I want to win. But over the years, I've learned to deal with failure a bit better and focus on what I need to work on. My trainer helps me with that. He'll say, OK, that wasn't very good. Now we know where we're at and we'll work on this or that. At this point, we don't know whether we'll get to prepare. The World Federation says there will be preparatory international tournaments. But at this point, no one knows what will actually happen. Here in Leipzig, Ndolo is only competing against other Germans. At the qualifying tournament in April, she will also likely face international fencers which will be even more challenging. Madalina Feuchmann's corona test has come back negative. But the lack of competitions is taking its toll on her. Life at the gym is lonely during lockdown. And then some disappointing news. Once again, she did not make it onto the Olympic squad. With no competitions to fight in, she was unable to make use of her second chance. The national coach called me and told me that the two previous nominees were re-nominated, meaning I won't be there. I'll only be there if someone drops out. This is wieder Yet another punch to the gut. But you just have to set yourself new goals. Keep looking forward and keep going. It's not so easy. And sometimes you do ask yourself, 
is it worth continuing now? But you have to shift your perspective. I have another chance at Paris, and I want to make use of that. Germany has recorded more than 50,000 coronavirus deaths since the start of the pandemic. That number has risen sharply over recent weeks, even as infection figures are finally declining. Biden, At the Olympic summer games in Tokyo, no foreign fans will be allowed into the country due to the coronavirus pandemic. A fishing rod instead of a javelin. Thomas Röhler misses competing. The last one was a practice competition last year. They called it a competition, but it was training. But other than that, it was after the World Cup in 2019. At the moment, things are scheduled to kick off again in May for Rula. But nothing is certain during the pandemic. Athletes now know that international spectators will not be allowed at the Tokyo Games. The news has made it even harder to stay motivated. For me personally, one thing that makes it all the more difficult is the fact that it looks like we'll be in the stadium without spectators. I love the sport with all of its emotions and with an audience that supports the athletes and gives us extra power. We'll notice their absence the way things currently are. In the meantime, the first vaccines were making their way to Germany, but only a few have been vaccinated. Everyone wants one, including top-level athletes. Vaccination is discussed a lot. It's a highly political and topical social issue. As an athlete, I'm in no position to say that I should be prioritized. We do want to practice our profession, but many others say that too. I don't think it would send the right message to society if we athletes were to shout that we should be the first to be vaccinated. The Olympics are an event for athletes from around the world to compete. But at this point, they and other major sporting events are above all a health risk. The athletes of Torun Hall thought good planning and social distancing would keep them safe, but now seven German competitors have contracted the virus. Indoor sporting venues are becoming hotspots. Bad news for the Olympic Games in Tokyo. Originally, I think we were around 11, but then several of us tested positive in Torun at the European Championships. After that, there were five of us, and then eventually six. The fact that some tested positive when they came back is surprising and also disappointing. Due to an injury, Marie Laurence was not at the European Championship. But now, she is finally able to settle in at the training camp. It felt really liberating, also because we really were at home most of the time, or training. Here, we can train in the sun and enjoy the weather. It's nice to see something different, a change of scenery, and that was really helpful for us. The athletes see being in La Palma as a privilege, but it's one that comes with strict social distancing requirements. The German team has been in effect sealed off, with almost no contact to the outside world. The Olympic Games are drawing ever closer, but Corona is still casting a cloud over Tokyo. On the one hand, I'm extremely happy that they're taking place and that I can take part. But on the other hand, it's strange, because everything is still so uncertain. Of course, we know that there will be no foreign spectators, but a lot of the other circumstances are unclear. So I wonder what's coming, but I am happy they're taking place. In just a few days, it will be time for the qualifying tournament for Alexandra Ndolo. 
I think I'm in a very good position. I've been training very regularly. I feel in shape, I'm not injured. Yes, I'm fired up. I just want to finally start. I hope I can maintain my fitness level until then, or maybe even improve it. At this tournament, there will be one winner. All the rest are basically in the same category. They didn't make it. Usually there's a winner, a podium, the top eight. All positions you can name and be proud of. In the qualifying tournament, it's all or nothing. Will the Epe Fencer make it to the games? And here we have Alexandra Ndolo, number 25 in the world rankings. Ndolo is off to a good start. She makes it to the semi-final. She's competing against a woman from Belarus. And the German wins. And there it is, the 15th touch by Ndolo, which has secured her entry into the finals. I wasn't at my normal level after a season. Usually, I'd have had eight World Cups and a 10-month season before arriving at the European or World Championships. But we did our best in the current situation. The finale starts. Ndolo is up against Olena Krivitska, a strong competitor from the Ukraine. The decisive match. There's the attack and the win, and the winning cry from the Ukrainian who has just secured her ticket to Tokyo. I didn't win the tournament, and of course I'm sad and a bit disappointed. But I'm not disappointed with my performance, because I know what I've achieved in these two years of qualification. My family and my friends give me so much support. I've had a nephew for almost two years now. And I have two grandparents who are still alive and in their mid-80s. Of course, the Olympic Games mean a lot to me. And succeeding means a lot to me. But having a healthy family that now spans four generations, I think things like that are more important. I know I'm not below average, that I'm one of the best in the world. It wasn't enough this time. But the fact is, only three people from all of Europe get to go. And they're among the absolute best in the world. So I guess I'll have to be among the absolute, absolute, absolute best in the world for Paris. And then I'll make it. The countdown has begun. The Olympic flame has started its journey through Japan here in Fukushima. The relay usually marks the moment that public excitement over the games picks up. But this time around, the situation is different. Japan is experiencing its fourth coronavirus wave. The vast majority here are for cancelling the games out of fear of new mass infections. I understand that some of the enthusiasm is gone, but for us athletes, it's the biggest possible achievement, and I think it's important for us now, and for sports in general. Marie-Laurence Jungfleisch is finally taking part in a competition. The pandemic still isn't over, so there will be no live spectators. It feels really good, really, to finally be allowed to compete after two years. But I felt a bit sluggish today. I can't really say why. I only drove three hours from home to Reilingen. But somehow I still felt as if I were tired and my legs aren't fit enough yet to jump any higher. But she manages to jump 1.88 meters and wins.
a good showing, yet she knows she can do better. The long forced interruption has disrupted her routine. I still have many competitions ahead of me. I need a routine to be ready for the Olympic Games, not just physically, but psychologically, to feel certain that I can reach a good height, that I'm not just getting to 1.84 meters, but to know that I can jump over 1.9 or 2 meters if I really give it my all and everything lines up. Then it's possible. In spite of the numerous setbacks, the Olympics are now slowly becoming a reality, even if many athletes still don't know exactly where they stand. In Germany, at the end of May 2021, the corona numbers are steadily decreasing. While the number of vaccinated people is finally increasing, among athletes as well. Thomas Röhler now has his sights firmly set on the Olympic Games. But what will the event be like this year? You didn't have a 100% fair competition before the pandemic, and you still won't have one after. But the pandemic has brutally widened the social gap even further. Those who have equipment or who were able to keep training despite lockdown conditions have a small advantage. The countries that had no restrictions at all have an even bigger advantage. Even after months of uncertainty, things still remain unclear. But the Olympic dream lives on. To enter the Games as an Olympic winner is very special. I'm still going with the aim to win. For us athletes, it's still a hugely significant event, and I hope that the atmosphere will be good, also among the athletes. I hope it will still be unforgettable.